So just in a run up to the National Valparais response, let us remind um, the audience, you probably don't need any um, reminders at this point, the overall risk of malformations um, in pregnancy is 2%, with all epilepsy drugs having a risk of 6%, but we know that epilim is far higher with that 40% risk. A publication, I think, which was really important to the community um, of neurologists and people working in epilepsy in Ireland here was done by Colin and our colleague Sinead Murphy, which looked at the pattern of Valpre prescribing between these years of 2008 and 2013. And it's separated with the, the green line showing people receiving Valprate through the general medical card scheme, and then in the blue line in the long-term illness scheme. Um, everybody who has a diagnosis of epilepsy receives their medications free through the long-term illness. And we can see a downward um, spiral there in the graph in the blue, and maybe less so in the green when you pool all the uh, comorbidities together. So as we know, in 2014, the European Medicines Agency ruled that doctors in the EU are now advised not to prescribe Valprate for epilepsy or bipolar disorder in pregnant women, or in women who can become pregnant, or in girls unless other treatments are ineffective or not tolerated. And for those on Valprate, it's the, where it's the only option for epilepsy or bipolar disorder, it should be advised on the use of effective contraception. And in 2014, when you pool those LTI and GMS people receiving Valprate, the graph is showing a downward slope in prescribing patterns. Um, but it was still felt that in 2014, it still wasn't getting those messages out. And the Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Committee understood this as well. And with a new review of the use of Valprate then being recommended, um, concerns were also, as we've heard, were raised from France particularly, and uh, there was further EU-wide action recommended. We heard public hearings from London, and we also had an Oireachtas, um, very much supported and brought to the fore by the Facts Committee also. So the new PRAC recommendations were that Valprate were to, was to be used in a restricted prescribing um, pattern, um, targeting um, the age range between 8 and 55 to avoid Valprate or epilim prescribing. Um, there was to be registration of all women who were to be prescribed um, Valprate and continuous surveillance and review of women who are receiving Valprate. And then this pregnancy prevention programme called PREVENT. And everybody involved in epilepsy care, and I'm sure in bipolar, very much welcomed these recommendations. Following these, the Valprate Response Project was established um, by the HSE. And the aim of this project was to avoid current and future harm in women who have been diagnosed with epilepsy, bipolar disease, or other conditions who may have been on epilim and also to direct women who have children who may have been affected by epilim um, to a firm diagnosis rather than a, a suspected diagnosis, and also to assist them access services, and to implement fully the HPRA recommendations and prevent programme. Um, this response, Valprate response project came from Colm Henry's office, and the project uh, lead was under um, the leadership of Deirdre McNamara, and as um, Andrew said earlier, I do feel also that very much this response team is working in collaboration with everybody. And these are the first steps that we will continue to take. So this is just to outline um, the work streams here. There's quite a number of them. Um, a decision was made to set up a phone support service, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, after some of the other speakers. There was a pathway set up um, for the psychiatry service to address and the mental health response to Valpre prescribing. Um, Ronan Glynn will describe the epidemiology um, of trying to retrospectively estimate the number of people affected in Ireland, um, possibly by Valprate. There was the women's health pathway, which is looking at future prescribing. The prevent pathway, which is looking around contraception and pregnancy advice. Um, the diagnostic pathway, which is um, led by Professor Green, looking at access to diagnostics for that diagnosis. And then the disability pathway um, in the community, led by Des, who's, who's looking at the diagnosis following 
um, Professor Green's diagnosis and to what those needs are and how they are addressed. So I'd like to hand over then, I think it's to Ronan to talk you through the epidemiology um, project that he covered looking at the estimation of potential people affected by epilim.